Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and we are continuing sneak week with three new products. I will be featuring the new Sweet Bear 4x6 stamp set and the new pop-up vase die set. Here is how that looks. And then I will pull in some of the hearts from the Assorted Heart die set. And all of the hearts are sized to fit inside the vase and the new pop-up basket that's also coming out in the Spring Fling release. So I'm going to show you guys how to assemble that vase, but first I'm going to color the bear that I plan on putting inside the box. This is the only stamped image that I'm going to put in other than some of the balloons from the stamp set, but I didn't color them. I stamped them on colored cardstock and just die cut them, but I am going to color up two bears from the Sweet Bear stamp set, and that is because I'm creating a 360 pop-up card. So I wanted you to be able to see more than just one bear in that card. So you could have put two or four or three, however many you really want, because as you spin the vase, you will see new images as you turn it. So I decided to go with two and I do have my marker caps on screen and I will have them listed in the description, but I am using E15, E13, E11, and E00 to create a tannish brown bear here. So as usual, I am coloring from darkest to lightest and leaving my center highlight for my lightest color and focusing the darker colors around the edges of the bear. So this stamp set, I illustrated this one and it's really cute for Valentine's Day and the sentiments in the stamp set can be stamped inside the little bear's heart so he can say be mine, I love you, um, hug me. There's a lot of combinations that you can choose from and the stamp set also includes a nice large sentiment that says just a reminder that you are loved and I will be using that in today's card that sentiment I hand lettered. I also drew to go with the bear a box of chocolates and some cute little balloons. So I mainly designed this stamp set to go with the pop-up basket that is coming out on Friday. I thought it would be really cute to create like a little Valentine basket with the bear and the chocolates. So you'll be seeing that tutorial tomorrow. And then on Friday, the release goes live and you'll be seeing the rest of the products on a product showcase video. So definitely hit your notifications so you're reminded when I post that video. So for his feet and his snout, I just gave him E11 and E00 and now I'm giving him a pink nose and some pink ears. And then I will just color in his heart now and then off camera, I will die cut him with the coordinating dies. And once I showcase the vase up close in the product release video, I'll show you everything that you get, but you do get obviously the card base, which you cut out twice from heavyweight cardstock. That is what that large piece is right there. And I am cutting from the individual panels on that die the XOXO and the love letters that are included in the die set, you can layer them on top of your card base, but I decided to cut the letters directly from the card base to create a really cool see-through card. You can also use the letters to do an inlay technique. You can, right now I'm alternating the XOXO and the love, but you can do XOXO all the way around. There's also two lace panels that are included in the die set that you can use to decorate the box as well. I am also cutting that bridge that's included in the die set. I'm going to cut that out four times. And then like I said, that card base, I'm gonna cut out twice and cut the letters directly from each of the panels to create eight panels that say XOXO and love. And then because you guys know me, I had to add acetate behind these letters just to make it look more clean and professional. You definitely don't have to do this, but there is also a solid rectangle die that you can use to cut from pattern paper or you can layer behind the lace or the XOXO and the love, but I just cut them from acetate 
and layered them behind the card panel. So this adds just a little bit of shine and I really like the look of acetate. You guys know me. So I cut that rectangle out eight times, but you actually get two of each die. So you get two of the lace panels and two of the solid panels. So you only have to cut it out four times. And then I'm going to just inlay the inside of the O back on top of the acetate. You could put a color cardstock behind. You can cut the, uh, the solid panel from colored cardstock and glue the letters on top of the solid to create a two-toned effect. Or you can cut from the solid panel the love and the XOXO and inlay some different colored letters inside. So really a lot of different combinations. And you'll see in the product showcase video, we really did them all. Or you can keep it really simple and just die cut the solid rectangle from pattern paper to decorate your vase. So right now I am just creasing all of the score lines that the die has provided. I am using a bone folder just because it's going to make the next step easier if you can really see those creases and those sharp edges. So I don't normally do this with my pop-ups, but I am going to do it for this vase. And at the very end of each panel, there is a half inch tab. So that is where you're going to add your double-sided tape. And just like we do with the shadow box, you're going to attach one tab to the side without the tab. And because the tab was being shown through the letters, I just trimmed it down a bit. I'll do the same thing to the other uh, tab and then I will just attach it to the opposite end. And then this gives you a really cool octagon shape. And here you can see all those letters cut through. It looks really cool. So now we are going to assemble the bridges that go inside the vase and pop up all of your elements. So like I said, I cut four of them and they each have half an inch tab on each side. So I'm cutting down my double sided tape to add to those tabs. This is how they will stick inside the vase. And what's different about these bridges as opposed to the box bridges is that they have a score line right in the center and that is going to give you this triangular shape. So you can see I am scoring or I guess folding all the score lines, removing the double sided tape and I'm creating these little triangles or arrows. Basically what's important here is that you want those sticky tabs to be facing each other and you want the point to be facing towards yourself to create that arrow shape. So I just did that to all four of them. And then here's how we add them inside the box. So you can really pick any point on the vase. So I just chose this one and you are going to butt one side of the bridge right up against the corner, as close to the score line as possible without overlapping that score line. So here I am pointing out that there is three points on this box. You're going to want to skip the one in the center and glue the other tab to that other point. I hope that makes sense. I think it's something that you have to watch and learn as opposed to trying to understand what I say because it's really not that hard. So we'll go ahead and add the next bridge. I'm going to butt the next bridge right up against the one that I just added up to the score line here. I'll make sure that's nice and adhered. And then here I'm gonna point out the three points again. So the point we just added, the center point, and the point we are going to add the other tab. You basically just skip the center point always and glue it to the next point. And here you can see that we're already starting to form that star shape. And here I'm just reminding you that you want to make sure that your glue tabs are facing each other and not away from each other. Otherwise the vase will not fold flat. So you always want that little arrow or that triangle before adding your bridge inside. So for my third bridge, I am adding it right against that score line right next to the bridge we just added. I'm pointing out those three score, uh, three points. I'm going to skip the second point and go straight to the third point to adhere my other tab. So here is our final bridge. Again, I will glue it right to the score line next to the bridge we added. We're going to skip that second point and glue the other side to that third point. 
And once you see that you have that star shape, you're good to go. You can go ahead and start folding all those bridges to make sure they're nice and well creased. And this is how it should look. So it's really easy and it's one of those products where once you create one card, you can really create a whole bunch. All right, so now we can finally decorate the inside of the box. So I stamped out the large sentiment from the stamp set. I gold heat embossed it onto a decorative die that I cut from pink cardstock. Again, I did that twice just because it's a 360 card. So I'm just heat setting that gold powder and I want these sentiments to be back to back because it is a 360 card, but before I attach them together, I wanna to add an acrylic stick between them. These sticks I create with 12 by 12 sheets of clear scraps. It's like a clear packaging material, so you can definitely use clear packaging if that's what you have. You can use acetate, but these are really great to pop up elements inside of any of the pop-up boxes that I've released from the last release and the new ones coming in the Spring Fling release. Here I'm just showing you that I die cut a bunch of hearts from the Assorted Heart die set. I cut some gold, white, and pink, and I'm going to show you that I layered some of the hearts together to create a two-toned or two-colored heart. Some of them even have three colors. But here's a good look at every heart that you get in the die set. They're sized perfectly to fit inside the vase and the basket, and you get quite a variety to choose from. And they're really great for filling an entire vase or basket. So I went ahead and first added my sentiment with that stick. I just added some three-in-one glue to the front of the stick and glue the front of the stick to one of the bridges inside the vase. I'm going to do the same thing with this bear here. And then I like to work around. I don't like to stick with one place like I would with my A7s or my other pop-ups. Because this is a 360, you want to make sure that everything is kind of symmetrical in a way. Not completely, but you want to make sure that there's not too much focus in one area, but everything is pretty well distributed. So you're going to notice as I add these hearts that I'm kind of turning the box and just filling the larger areas first. And then I will go back around and add the smaller hearts to fill in the blank areas. So here I'm cutting down some more acrylic sticks to add behind some of the hearts. I'm using a glue called 3-in-1, which is really great for attaching these elements onto the clear sticks. And it's a little bit more forgiving than art glitter glue, so if you ever have to move anything, you can do that pretty easily with this glue. It takes a while to dry. Some of the hearts I'm not adding to sticks, I'm just gluing them either directly to the card base or directly onto one of the bridges. So like this um, balloon here with the lips, I just attached the glue to the string of the balloon and attached it directly to the card base. So definitely utilize the bridge space as well as the front card base. That's just going to give you some more depth and it's going to give you more surface area to really fill your box. So as you can see, I am rotating this vase and adding my elements inside. In the Assorted Hearts die set, you also get this really cute smooch. So I added that onto the card base in front of the bear. I'm also going to add this small gold heart underneath him to kind of hide that stick that he's floating on. So I am continuously closing the card just to make sure that I'm not exceeding the boundary of it fitting into an A7 card. So if you start adding things too far beyond the vase, you are going to have problems mailing the card. So you can definitely hand deliver, but here I am trying to make sure that everything is within the vase and I'm not going too far outside the vase. You're also going to want to make sure that your elements are not exceeding 7 inches or else again it won't fit in the envelope. But this card definitely does and I'm just showing you guys the completed 360 card. Isn't this just such a cool die set to have? You can really put anything you want inside of it. It's definitely a year-round product again and it's just so cool. Here I'm showing you how it folds flat. And it does work with the A7 mechanism, so 
I'll show that in an upcoming video just because it didn't work with the letter windows that I cut but it's super cool and I love this die. So let me know what you guys think. I think it's gonna be a huge hit for the release. If you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell because tomorrow I am posting the pop-up basket tutorial. All right guys, I will see you next time. Bye.